What's going on people, Ryan Williams AC here with your match preview. It's the London Derby, it's Chelsea taking on Arsenal. Now guys, if you're new to the channel, please make sure you like, share and subscribe. We are currently on the road to 200 subscribers, so if you're a first time viewer, smash that subscribe button, share the content and of course hit that like button and let me know your thoughts down below. So this game, this game has finally come around, Chelsea hosting Arsenal. Um, of course, both teams have qualified to the next stages of their individual European competitions. Chelsea going into the next round of the Champions League. Arsenal qualifying to the next round of the Europa League. Both finishing top of their groups. So, Premier League, um, yeah, Premier League time. Um, Chelsea coming back from a 4-1 loss against Brighton away from home. That was a very difficult game for Chelsea. Um, yeah, um, from what I saw, it looked very, very easy for Brighton at, at stages. Chelsea were very open, um, uh, very vulnerable at the back. It didn't help when Kepa came off injured either. And it looked like Thiago Silva was just defending for his life at times. And two own goals from Loftus-Cheek and Trevor Chulaba. Uh, sorry if I butchered your name. And, you know, Brighton were just causing so many problems. Of course, they did. Chelsea did get a goal um, at the break, um, start of second half. But Brighton managed to put their final nail in the coffin later on uh, with Pascal Gross. But, you know, that's Chelsea. Arsenal, on the other hand... Um, Winning their game very comfortably um, against Nottingham Forest. First half, I felt, well, i done a match reaction, in fact. So, you guys could check that out. i go into more detail on that. But, of course, a few bullet points. Uh, you know, we got a great goal for Martinelli. Um, beautiful cross by Bakayo Saka. Um, we left the game at 1-0 in the first half. Of course, Saka did go down just before that. Um, he looked like he couldn't run and really continue with a kick down by uh, Reddy Lodi. And we bring on Reese Nelson. Second half, we tie it up. Reese Nelson getting two goals and an assist from a world class goal from Thomas Partey. And Erdegaard finished it up. Won comfortably 5 0. I mean, it was a very, very good day at the office. So. This game is going to be very, very different. The questions are going to be on Arsenal and Chelsea. For Arsenal, can we continue momentum um, in the top half of the table, right at the top? I mean, Manchester City did win their game against Fulham 2-1. So that takes City back at the top of the Premier League by a point as Arsenal take on Chelsea tomorrow. Um, other than that, this is it. This is it. Chelsea, I'm pretty sure they're seventh in the table. Correct me if I'm wrong. And um, the thing is with Arsenal, injuries, we only got Tommy Asu more than likely out after he did pull up in his, uh, in the, in, sorry, in the Europa League game. Apologies, guys. Uh, totally was, my head had so much information to dish out. So yeah, Tommy Asu pulled up and he's more than likely going to be out for this game. So the question is, is Kieran Tierney going to get a start? I thought he was putting in a man in a match performance as i said in my match reaction guys go check that out if you haven't uh from the europa league on thursday just gone um other than that the rest of the team is fit as far as i'm aware you know we saw el nene back the only injuries that we know is tommy asu and of course smith Rowe, who's probably expected to be back Maybe mid late December, but we'll find out soon. Chelsea, on the other hand, do have a quite a few injuries and to some key players. You know, Fofana, as we know, is out. Kepa, of course, got injured in that Brighton game. We know Reese James is out for a long period of time, same as Kante, and so is Chilwell. And very all much in doubt, or more than likely, not going to be able to play in the World Cup that's coming up very, very soon. So, the question is, for Arsenal, of course, how do we approach that game? And for Chelsea, how do they approach that game? For us, of course, this is the Arsenal channel here. It's about implementing our game on Chelsea. Now, we can't underestimate Chelsea because they've got a few 
injuries to quite a few key players as I've just listed. You know, they do still have some players that could potentially hurt us, guys. They still have guys like Raheem Sterling. You know, Pulisic could come in. they got guys like Mason Mount, um, Gallagher. You know, they still have those players. And, of course, a certain player that we all know very, very well uh, that's more than likely wants to set a point for this game. And you've heard it on the advert that's out there in Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang. So... That's gonna be someone that's gonna be up for the game, so that's that's someone we have to really think about as well and try and shut down, you know. So that's gonna be questions for Arsenal. Can we deal with that, you know? And of course, their midfield. I mean, um, of course, their their midfield. They got well. Are they gonna they're gonna have to start Sakaria. I mean, I know we played in the Champions League game the other day. I didn't really see much of it, but I assume he's probably going to play. They've got Kovacic there, and I'm wondering if Grand Potter is going to try and tighten it up because if Chelsea have any hope of trying to shut us down, they need to tighten it up. But if, listen, if it's not there, then we need to expose that. Erdegaard, I need Erdegaard on point, picking out the passes. If the opportunity comes, he needs to start shooting as well. Jesus, I know a lot of people have been talking online you know should we be worried Arsenal fans about um him not really scoring in in, a, in quite a few games to be honest his last goal was um in the North London derby so it's should we be worried I'm not worried as much because to be honest as much as I like Jesus and I want him to score goals I believe it will come soon hopefully in this game but he has done other stuff off the ball working hard tracking back and just causing the defence, his energy is vital for us, you know. And the way he allows Martinelli and Saka to really get in behind in the lines and, you know, set up space and, and even creates, creates gaps and spaces for Erdogan to find him. As well as other players like Thomas Partey, who we know who can pass, and even Xhaka, you know. So, who's, who's, had, who's actually on the form of his life right now. So, to be honest with you guys, we need to start very well, fast you know, and really implement our game on Chelsea. Because again, right now, Potter's trying to find his feet at Chelsea. And we need to make use of them being in a little bit of an iffy form. The reason I say iffy, because in Europe they've done well, but the Premier League, they haven't really been playing that well, you know. So that's all I've got to really say on that, to be honest with you. So for me, with us, our advantages is our attack. Our disadvantage, I would say, potentially that high line. I know some games we've got away with it. There's games where we haven't got away with it. And, you know, I'm thinking about the pace that they have. I know Bamyang's not as fast as he used to be, but he is a threat. We, 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 let's be honest, guys. He is a threat. Um, Sterling, I know he hasn't really been playing that well, but he's still there, you know? Pulisic, potentially. Guys, they got players. they got pace, you know. Um, Brozier, if they use him, who's an unknown entity to us. You know, we ain't really played against Brozier. As far as I'm aware, maybe we played against the last season when we was on loan to Southampton, but I can't really remember that far back. I'll be honest. I'll hold my hands up. So, they're there. They're their threats for us. You know, the disadvantages for us, and of course, of our advantages are attack. You know, as well as our midfield, providing what they put out, you know. Um, Chelsea, I just said their advantage is their pace. Their disadvantage could be their midfield, you know, in what Potter is going to set up. Um, maybe their defence. I'm not sure on their fitness of their defenders. I know Kudabadi didn't play uh, last weekend um, against Brighton. So that's something we have to consider as well. And yeah, that's it really. That's all I have for you guys in terms of that. But for me... Uh, I'm going for a 2-1 victory. It's going to be tough. I don't underestimate Chelsea. You know, is as bad as they... I don't want to say they're awful, but they just had an awful performance against Brighton and they're still trying to figure themselves out right now as well as Graham Potter. So, you know, I don't underestimate my opponents unless I really know they're really bad. But, you know, for me, I'm going 2-1 Arsenal and... That's all I've got for you guys. 2-1 Arsenal. Guys, let me know your thoughts down below in the comment section. 
Um, the left back situation, I'm probably going to throw Kieran Tierney in there. Um, I think he deserves it. I think he had a fantastic game in the Europa League. As even in even in spells where we weren't playing too well, I thought Tierney was still very good alongside Ben White. You know who is having a fantastic season. There's a lot of players in our team right now who are having a fantastic season. You know, so for me, that's that. You know, two one Arsenal guys. If you use your channel, please make sure you like, share, and subscribe. Let me know your thoughts down below in the comment section. And, of course, road to 200 subscribers. Let's make it happen, people. And I'll be back after the game for the full match reaction and, of course, my analysis and thoughts in the game. So, guys, take it easy and have a nice evening. Peace.